Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and today we're going to be taking a look at animation groups. Specifically, how you can deconstruct them and use their pieces to apply animations to other elements within your scene. Now, I am super excited about today's video because I get to show you something that is very near and dear to my heart, something that I've been working on. It is the Pirate Fort! Yes, it is true, I do love pirates, if you couldn't tell, and the Pirate Fort is something that I am so excited to share with you. Now, before we dive into this, I want to take a moment to shout out to Grant Abbott. If you don't know who Grant is, and you're interested in 3D, you need to know Grant. Grant is this amazing 3D artist that has a YouTube channel dedicated to teaching people all about 3D, and how to use Blender to create amazing 3D assets and worlds. I used Grant's C Shack tutorial series as inspiration for the Pirate Fort, and really you need to go check out Grant's channel, which you can find a link for in the description down below. So thank you, Grant, for all the amazing work you do and for the inspiration for the Pirate Fort here. Okay, let's dive right in to the Pirate Fort scene. What we have here is this awesome scene that I can tumble around, I can click on a cannon, and it'll hop back kind of do a little hop back animation, any one of them. Now, these are all clones, and today the most important thing that we're going to be doing is kind of taking the cannon asset, loading it into the scene, and cleaning it up. Now, I know that doesn't sound super exciting, but there's a ton to learn in this, so I hope you stick around for it. So let's take a look at the cannon asset by itself, okay? This is it here, and it looks a little something like this. It starts with a single root node, and then under that, I have a cannon root. And then underneath that, there's the meshes, the cannon mount, which is the brown part with the, uh, the wheels. And then, of course, the like cast iron part of the cannon uh, underneath that. So having two roots isn't super useful, so we'll have to clean that up in a minute. But I also have two animation groups. I have one animation that controls sort of the little tilt of the cannon itself. And then I have another one that's the little hop back for the cannon mount. And having two animation groups is fine, uh, but I actually would like to combine these together, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So let's dive into the Canon asset, and one of the ways that we're going to start to clean it up is by getting rid of this top root node. And it's pretty easy, but let's take a look at how I do that. Okay, I have um, this uh, line of code here, which imports the Canon, and then I have these three here, which are going to essentially unparent the Canon uh, root from the top root. And here's how it works. Uh, I take the imported cannon, okay, and I say, give me the top node. In that case, that's this root node. And then I want to get all children. Now there's only one, so I want to take the first one. And the first child is cannon root. And then I want to say, okay, that's equal to cannon. So the cannon root, I'm going to set its parent to none. So now it is unparented, and then of course I can get rid of the original top level root node, and now it looks like this, nice and clean. So I have the cannon root, and the cannon mount, and then the cannon. Now, you may, uh, may see this if you're going from Blender uh, and using the GLTF exporter that's built into Blender 2.8 and above, then you um, might see that you get extra root nodes, and don't worry about that. You can take care of that with something simple like this as unparenting and clean it up once you get inside of Babylon if you want to. Okay. The other thing I have here is animation groups. I have two of them, and I actually want there to be one. And the reason I want there to be one is to manage complexity. Let's think about it this way. In my scene, I want to uh, click on a cannon, and I want the cannon to do two animations. Well, I could write, hey, animation number one, play, animation number two, play, or I could combine them and just write animation group, play and it'll play both of them. That's pretty handy. Now, with two, it may not seem like a huge savings, but imagine if you wanted something to happen where you clicked on an object and 75 different animations happened. Well, then, of course, you'd save yourself a ton of time by grouping those together. So let's dive through the scene now, now that we have a semi-cleaned-up hierarchy for our canon, okay? Uh, so I first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, have a clear color here, have an arc rotate camera with some certain limits so I can't go too close or too far to the asset, and then uh, give uh, uh, canvas control so as I click the canvas I can uh, animate the camera. Okay, now this is really, really important. The really important thing to know in Babylon. A mesh that's going to be animated 
has no knowledge of its animation. You got to really understand that it's different than some other 3D applications you may have used. The mesh itself exists as a completely separate construct from an animation. Those are two different things. Now, of course, an animation needs to know, I need to apply a certain number of values to the mesh. So the animation knows about the mesh, but the mesh doesn't have any awareness of any animations in the scene. And that's a really, really important thing to know, because that means that if I want to click on a mesh, I can't just say, hey, play an animation. I have to know which animation in the scene to play. So I need to manage a relationship between the mesh and the associated animation I want it to be uh, to associated with. And so that's what this is. This is going to be a JavaScript object where I'm going to store key value pairs for the Canon clone that I create and the associated animation I want to play based on which clone was selected. Okay, so we'll use that in a little bit, but that's why this is here. Okay, I'm going to load in the pirate fort. I'm going to name the top level node pirate fort. I'm going to find the C and then I'm going to give the material, a, a say that it needs a depth prepass. I'm going to set that to true. That happens sometimes when you're using transparency, depending on the way you've set up the asset, it actually helps with the Z ordering of the uh, transparency and how it's rendered. Uh, it kind of depends on how it's set up and whether or not you want to use this or not, it's up to you, but it's there and you should know about it. And then also I'm going to dial up the intensity of the directional light that I've added to the scene, which I've called sun. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm gonna, we've already seen the canon here. We've already seen that we've loaded it in and we've cleaned up the hierarchy. So uh, just like in the previous video where I used a create picking ray to select a canon based on, uh, 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 sorry, select a canon based on the metadata in it. I select any mesh and I filter based on the metadata. Um, I'm doing that again here. So essentially, I'm going to look for was a mesh picked and then did that mesh have a metadata tag? This isn't the only way to filter down. It's just one of them. And it's the one that I want to use to say, okay, was a cannon selected? And that's, I'm going to use that with metadata. So we've now imported the cannon and then I want to import the animation groups. Okay. So remember we have two of them, right? There's these two different animation groups. I want to now set them to imported anim groups. And this is where we start to get really deep into what is an animation group. You have to think of it in three different layers, animations within Babylon. Well, think about it this way. At the very bottom level, there's an animation. An animation is just values that change from one point to another over time at a certain frame rate. Let's take the value of X. Let's say I want uh, X to go from the value of zero to five from frames zero to 30 over 30 frames a second. So it will change X from zero to five over one second, okay? That's an animation. It has no knowledge of what it's affecting. It's just a value. Then you have a targeted animation and a targeted animation sits above that. And it says, I'm gonna take that animation data and apply it to a specific entity in Babylon, say a mesh or a camera, or a light. You could apply that same animation data to multiple different things in your scene if you want to. And so then of course you have your targeted animation, which is animation applied to a thing. And then what happens if you want multiple different animations all grouped together to play at the same time? Well, that's an animation group. So now you can have multiple targeted animations in one animation group, play that group, and all of the animation targeted animations inside of it will play. And that's essentially what we're going to do here. So we're going to rip apart the uh, animation groups that start with the canon, and then we're going to rebuild them in the way that we want them. So let's walk through this together. Firstly, I'm going to create an array called animations, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into the targeted uh, to the animation groups, into the targeted animations, and pull out just the raw animation data. I don't care what it's associated with. I just want the animation data. And so I'm going to pull that out here, and it looks like this. I'm going to loop through all of the imported animation groups. Remember, in this case, we have two. I'm going to stop any animations from playing. Uh, that's not necessary. It's just something I wanted to do for debugging so I didn't constantly see the animation looping. If, um, and so then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take the imported animation group. I'm going to take the targeted animation and pull out just the animation data itself and then push that into my animations array. And then I'm going to dispose of the original animation group. So by the time I'm done with this loop, I have an array here that has the raw animation data for the camera tilt and the camera mount, little hop back thing, 
independent of any meshes. It's just the data stored into an array, okay? Now what I want to do is create a new animation group here, and I'm going to add a new targeted animation. I'm going to take the, let's say, the, I don't know which one's which, I forget, but we're going to take the cannon tilt, and we're going to apply that to the cannon. Now it's the same cannon mesh that it was originally applied to, but I'm redoing it with a singular animation group. And it may sound redundant, but again, think about saving yourself time down the road by only having one animation group to manage. So I do this twice. So the, can uh, the cannon gets its animation back, and the cannon mount gets its little hop animation back. So the by the time that I'm done with this, it actually looks a little something like this. I have the cannon root, I have the cannon mount, and the cannon. And then under animation groups, I have a single animation group now that has two different targeted animations on it. Now it's nice and clean. Now we're ready to clone this and build out our scene. Okay, so that's a lot, and it's important to know how animations work. The next part, not important to you at all. It's just the specific positions and rotations that I want the cannons in for this particular scene. Okay, so it's not something that you really need to care about. But this definitely is. I'm going to loop through 10 times and create 10 clones of our original cannon. Okay, so each time we go through the loop, I create a clone. I'm going to set its position based on where I want these positions, again, based on this array of positions and rotations here. And then I'm going to create a new animation group. Now, this part might throw you off. You're saying, I'm cloning the canon, right? So why are you creating a new animation group? Because remember, in Babylon, the mesh exists separately from the animation. So even though if I have my original canon here and my original animation group for that canon here, and I clone the canon, I now have to figure out how do I create a new animation group that points to the cloned canon instead of pointing to the original canon. I hope that makes sense. That's what we're doing right here. And again, you can see those three layers of animation group down to targeted animation, down to animation data. You can see that in, at play again right here. So I create a new animation group, and then I'm going to add a new targeted animation, and I'm going to pull the animation curve data from the Canon Anim group. That's the one animation group I created with the first targeted animation and the, the first curve data from it. And then I'm going to apply that to the appropriate mesh. Okay, and so now what I have after this is done is with each loop through, I have a clone of the canon and I have a new animation group where the animations are pointing to the cloned meshes, not the original meshes. I hope that makes sense why that's important. So by the time, oh, and then of course, what I do is I'll go through and because I don't need the original canon anymore, that was just sort of my uh, copy mechanism, I'm going to get rid of the original canon, okay, and the original canon group, uh, anim group. So now let's look in the inspector at the hierarchy. I have 10 different canons, each with that nice clean hi hierarchy that we went through. And under animation groups, I have 10 different animation groups, each with targeted animations pointing at the appropriate cloned mesh. But we're not quite done there because remember, I want to interact with a mesh and then play an animation, which means I need to store a relationship for the mesh to know which animation group is associated with it. And that is going to happen right here. I actually skipped over that part. That's where I'm going to say, okay, I want to take this uh, Canon Animation Pairings JavaScript object. And I want to say the Canon clone that I've created, the mesh, the name of the, the top node of the mesh, is going to be set to the name of the animation group. So now I have key value pairs for all 10 Canons and the associated animation groups. Awesome. So now we get to get into some of the fun interaction parts. I'm going to here check in the scene when the pointer is clicked, I'm going to look at the pick result. Now, if you remember from that last video that I did, I showed you how to use that create picking ray. This is just a different way to do it. There's multiple different ways in Babylon to accomplish what you want to be able to do. This is just one of them. Uh, and so here I'm introducing a new way to do it, which is to take the pick result from the on pointer down event. Okay. And so uh, what I want to do is I first want to say, was there a mesh that was picked? And did that mesh have 
metadata equal to the word canon. So this is the moment where I'm filtering between picking on a canon and any other type of mesh in the scene, say the pirate fort per se. Uh, if I end up inside of this check, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of logic here. This part might be a tiny bit confusing, but basically it's just a bit of code I wrote to figure out um, the top level node for any given mesh that was picked. So no matter if I pick the cannon or the cannon mount, I'm going to find the top level uh, parent in that particular asset because that's what's stored in the key value pair. Okay, so the top parent becomes always this canon clone, this top level node. Okay, whatever, whichever one it is. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's check that key value pair. And based on the top level node name that's here, based on which canon clone I picked, what's the appropriate or the associated animation group? And then I'm going to say that is going to be animation to play. I'm going to store that. So now I know I've clicked on a cannon and I know the appropriate animation group name that I should play. And so then I'm going to loop through all of the animation groups in the scene. And I am going to then say, hey, is the current one that I'm looking at equal? Is it the same name as the animation to play? The one I've said is the appropriate one to play based on which mesh that was clicked. If it is, then go ahead and play it. And that is the end of the scene. Then we end up with our clones. I can click on any given canon. They all have their own animation groups and they all have uh, their own interaction because they have their own animation groups pointing to the appropriate clones. Man, that's a lot, but how exciting is that? It's so cool. That is our scene fully constructed, cleaning up and going through the complexity of animation groups and how to break them apart and reuse pieces to create new ones and clone them for different objects that we're gonna clone in the scene. I hope this video has been useful to you. Again, please go check out Grant Abbott's channel because I just really love the work that he's doing and we wanna support him. And thank you so much for coming and checking this out. I hope it was educational for you. Whatever future kind of content you want to see, go ahead and comment down below. We'd love to see that. And in the description down below, you can find a link to this playground. You can also find a link to the sandbox, to Grant's uh, channel, and then also a documentation page on animation groups within Babylon. Again, thank you so much for checking this out. If you haven't already had uh, a chance to do this, I hope you'd consider subscribing to this channel so you don't miss any future updates. And again, thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you next time.